What's up everyone, Maximum Quality Content here and welcome to Quality Corner, my excuse to ramble about what I've been playing. Today I'm going to be talking about Alice Madness Returns, a game released in 2011 which serves as a sequel to American McGee's Alice in Wonderland released in the year 2000. Which by the way is nowhere to be found on PC, EA please do something about that please! If you played games between the 2000s to the 2010s, you'll probably be familiar with how this one plays. It's your typical western third person action adventure game in the same vein as Prince of Persia the Warrior of Inn, Star Wars The Vault Unleashed, DMC Devil May Cry, Dante's Inferno, and countless others. A genre that was pretty popular in the late 6th gen and 7th gen era of gaming. It even contains similar gameplay elements synonymous with the genre such as hack and slash mixed with platforming, varied weapons and powers as well as chase sequences where you're running away from an enemy. In my opinion it's a solid entry in this expansive genre and definitely worth checking out despite some drawbacks I'll get into later. But enough dilly dallying, let's deep dive into the maddening, insane and chaotic world of Wonderland, starting with the gameplay. Throughout the 16 to 18 hour duration, you'll be taking control of Alice, who can quadruple jump, glide and dodge a short distance. Right off the bat you'll notice how floaty Alice feels, which is a really nice touch. It feels very apt for the character and it makes the platforming very smooth and satisfying to pull off. Mwah. I must reiterate, it's awfully fitting for a dainty young British woman living in London. A dainty young British woman living in London with machine guns, bombs and a big ass knife. Which brings me to the combat. Unfortunately, Wonderland is not quite the silly childish place we are used to from the Disney movies. Alice is going to encounter all kinds of disturbing horrors out to kill her, so she needs a means to defend herself. You'll predominantly be hacking away at enemies with the aforementioned big ass knife, or the vocal blade as the game calls it. If you had any doubt that Alice was a Londoner, then there's your proof. To spice things up, she also gets her hands on the pepper grinder, teapot cannon and hobby horse, each with their own uses in battle. The pepper grinder is good for shooting enemies in the air or at a distance, the teapot cannon is great for crowd control and the hobby horse is useful for hitting enemies on or beneath the ground. And that's it. By the start of chapter 3 you've obtained all of the weapons in the game, and there are 6 chapters in total. There definitely should have been a lot more weapon variety. You really start to feel how repetitive the gameplay is later on, especially in chapter 5. You can upgrade these 4 weapons by collecting pearly white teeth. Something that personally made me envious due to my real life abominations. You can find them dropped by enemies, placed in breakable objects and scattered throughout the various levels. Aside from appearance, the upgrades are fairly superficial, increasing standard stat attributes like damage, speed and ammunition count. I think if there were more in-depth upgrades that changed or added new properties to the weapons then I think that would have removed or at least decreased the issues of limited weapon variety. Alice also gains access to the umbrella which can be used to deflect projectiles back at enemies, as well as a bomb with a timed explosion which you can manually detonate. The bomb is mainly utilised for platforming puzzles, but it can potentially be used in combat. However, it's about as useful as tits on a goddamn bull and it can't be upgraded so I wouldn't bother. The game features a lock-on to make targeting enemies easier, but when using projectile weapons you can free aim. This actually makes some encounters a lot easier, for example the wasps in chapter 3 will always dodge your ranged weapons when locked on. Unless you free aim, which allows you to completely demolish them. If you're still getting your ass whooped all over Wonderland, then fear not. If your health bar gets too low, you can enter Devil Trip uh, Hysteria Mode, which makes you immune to damage while dishing out a hell of a lot more to enemies. Overall, I found the game was a bit too easy on normal difficulty. Upgradable health can... Wait, <laughs> what the f... Why did I put health care in the script? Upgradable health bar and not Devil Trigger make it so you'll never die. I recommend playing the game on hard. Well, that about sums up the combat. Despite my complaints about limited weapon variety, what you do have at your disposal is, for lack of a better word, sick. All of the weapons are awesome to use and have amazing impact and oomph to them, making battles all the more enjoyable. The transition from platforming to combat is seamless, making the game flow well throughout your playthrough. The game switches back and forth from the drab, shitty London in the real world and Alice's wild, insane imaginings of Wonderland. The London sections don't offer much though, they're basically corridors that take you to the next cutscene. Personally, I would have loved to see more of Alice in the real world. It would have been a great opportunity to explore the story, add to lore and develop the various characters introduced throughout the game that are in some way connected to Alice and her past. But to be fair, that's not the highlight of the game, that would be Wonderland. I'm happy to report that Wonderland is absolutely breathtaking. 
You'll be taken to five different levels in total, each with their own aesthetic. Even a decade later, the game still looks gorgeous. The art style makes playing through the levels, despite the length, an absolute joy. All of these levels are a blast, my favourite being the Mysterious East in Chapter 3. Not only does it give me serious Okami vibes, but I loved the feudal Japanese sounding music and has the best enemy type encounters by far. Unfortunately, the downside to these levels is, as I said, they go on for far too long. Now don't get me wrong, I enjoyed them, but after two and a half hours they had overstayed their welcome. There was clearly time spent padding out these levels, which is a shame because I think that time would have been better spent on other aspects of the game. Which brings me to the bosses, or notable lack thereof. In this game you can battle the final boss, and that's it. There are no other bosses to be found, and funnily enough the game teases the idea of battling a boss multiple times. For example, at the end of chapter 1, Mad Hatter's rabbit friends gear up in a massive mech suit. Oh shit, it's going down now, we're about to face off against this huge ass mech! Oh wait, he gets feed in a cutscene. Throughout chapter 5, you get chased by this executioner card. Oh shit, we found some growing cake, we're about to throw down with this mofo who's been chasing us the whole time, let's go! Oh wait, he gets feed in a cutscene. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, there are some mini games thrown into the mix, such as puzzles, side-scrolling shooting, and side-scrolling platforming. They're not much, but they're neat little small small additions that change things up a tad. The side scrolling platforming sections in chapter 3 look like they were ripped straight out of an ancient Japanese scroll, another reason why that level is awesome. Overall, the gameplay is a banger, the levels are bangers, I just wish they were a lot shorter. By the end of the game I was practically playing just to get to the next story cutscene. Speaking of... Get those fat ass whores out on the street or I'll come up and brain Shut you. off you cocker snipe. As I stated in the beginning, this game is a sequel to 2000's American McGee's Alice in Wonderland, which tells the story of a young Alice Liddle, whom after a traumatic house fire that ends in the death of a family, falls into a catatonic state being sent to Rutledge Asylum for treatment. She fully retrieves into her mind and to Wonderland, where she has to face off against the Queen of Hearts. After defeating the Queen, she seemingly recovers from her coma and is set free from Rutledge Asylum, being sent to an orphanage in London, which is where this game picks off. Through a hallucination, Alice finds herself back in Wonderland yet again. Everything seems peaceful at first, until she discovers the infernal train that ravages through everything in its path, utterly fucking up Wonderland. Along with it are these new enemies called the Ruin, slimy black creatures with creepy doll faces aiming to wipe out both Alice and the inhabitants of Wonderland. The Cheshire Cat informs her that the train is the result of some sort of external force, and not her doing. Alice then spends the rest of the game seeking out former friends and foes alike to discover the source of the train, and that's the setup for Alice Madness Returns. The story is delivered to you via in-game cutscenes and beautifully stylized 2D animatics that look straight out of an old school play. On the topic of these animatics, one of the cutscenes actually had me belly laughing. I'm not sure if it was intended to be as funny as I found it to be, but before we continue, I need to show you real quick. Trust me, it's worth it. Welcome to the show! That's quite enough of that, I think. Enough preliminaries. Here's the performance you've been waiting for. Proves I'm without prejudice and have a fine sense of humour. A pretty interesting and somewhat confusing story in my opinion. There's a lot of subtle hints and clues left in the game and the cutscenes that give you a more solid idea of what is going on. A lot of easily missable hints that if you don't pick up on, might leave you lost. I know when I finished the game I was like, whoa. I guarantee that on your first playthrough there will be story beats and elements that remain confusing, but upon further examination there's a lot to dig into and explore, which in the game's favour adds replay value. Another thing to mention is that the game is really fucking dark in tone. The story covers a lot of disturbing themes that are not for the faint of heart. Don't be fooled by Wonderland guys, there's some not safe for life shit within. The majority of the darker elements of the story will be found in the real world section of the game, which makes sense. In this series, Wonderland is a place that Alice can retreat to as a form of escapism from the depressing reality of the 1800s and her terrible traumatic situation. In London you'll find prostitutes, drunks and creepy dudes aplenty. 
got plans for her. Take her over to the Mango Mermaid. Rent a bed. Progressing through the story, you'll notice that Wonderland mirrors the real world experiences of Alice. For example, the smoke infested rooftops of London mirror the decrepit, smoky factories formerly owned by Mad Hatter. The Japanese collection of Alice's lawyer mirror the mysterious east of Wonderland she travels to in Chapter 3, and so on and so forth. It's also worth noting that Wonderland reflects some of Alice's adult aspects and exposures, such as getting wasted in order to shrink and smoking to progress the stage. At least that was my takeaway from what I witnessed. I could be completely full of crap, but I think that goes to show just how much you can absorb, interpret and take away from this game's narrative, both in terms of cutscenes and gameplay. Because Alice is 18 years old in this game and has gone through countless amounts of traumatic incidents, she no longer has the childish innocence that we see in other media involving Wonderland. All in all, the game rewards you for paying attention, which adds to the already investing story. I don't want to get into ending spoilers, but the shoe really drops in Chapter 6. Holy moly does this game enter into some depraved territory I don't even want to talk about. But in saying that, this game handles the disturbing themes mostly with care, not going into too much gratuitous territory. In summary, the story is definitely the highlight of the game, and is what will carry you from beginning to end, bearing through the overly lengthy levels. Alice Madness Returned is a pretty decent third person action adventure game, with an amazing story that will keep you invested and playing through some of the glaring gameplay drawbacks. If you find this game on sale, I definitely recommend giving it a go if you've got the time and the stones to witness a rather dark story to say the least. Anyways, that's about it for my thoughts on the game. Thank you for watching the first episode of Quality Corner. I'm still not sure whether or not I'm going to stick with that title permanently. Now that I think about it, I hope there's no other shows out there called Quality Corner. Hold on, I, actually I'm going to look this up real quick. I didn't think to look this up before, bear with me. Quality Corner. Uh, oh crap, shit, there's a company. Quality Corner Company. Apparently it's an architectural interior design company. And it's ran by Hashem Swalme. I am competing with Hashem Swalme. And I'm going to win. Like if you liked, dislike if you disliked, consider subbing for more quality content and I'll see you guys next time.